Crop loss from spring freeze injury is one of the most challenging aspects of fruit production. This past spring series of freezes rivaled the losses of the 2007 Easter freeze. Unfortunately, we pretty much lost most of the fruit crops in the north, central, and eastern portions of the state. As flower buds progress to later stages, they lose their hardiness. Uh, a critical temperature is defined as the temperature at which a bud, flower, or small fruit is killed. Critical temperatures are not absolute and they're affected by the weather prior to the freeze. If we have cool, dry weather, this increases the hardiness. If we have warm, wet weather, this decreases the hardiness because those buds are growing and metabolizing and they're less hardy. Uh, the dew point is the point at which water condenses out of the air. It goes from the gas to the liquid phase and it gives off heat. So if you have a high dew point temperature of say 55 degrees, this slows the rate of temperature drop and we have less damage. If we have a low dew point, for example, uh, 25 degrees, that temperature drops really fast and there's more of a chance for ice crystals to form inside the cells and rupture the cell membranes. And as a result, we tend to get more damage with a low dew point. Here we have the critical temperature of 28 degrees for 10% kill and 25 degrees for 90% kill on poem. These are apple and uh, pears and stone fruit or peaches and plums and cherries. Uh, this is quite a variation and this is due to uh, different hardiness levels uh, within the tree and different stages of development and uh, different locations of the trees in the orchard. When freezing first starts, uh, the flowers on the tree super cool to slightly below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And all of a sudden, uh, we have ice nucleation and this propagates through the tree. Initially, ice lenses form beneath the epidermis or beneath the skin of the flower and split the epidermis off the fruit. Next, the freezing takes place at the pistil and moves down the pistil into the interior or ovary portion of the flower or fruit. If we look at the lower diagram here in phase one where the skin is lifted off the fruit, this is not lethal. Those flowers generally survive. Phase two where the ice nuclei propagate down into the ovary area is generally a lot more lethal. Uh, we'll have some survival but not a whole lot. Here we have an example of a damaged apple fruit. Uh, you can see it's discolored. This is apparent uh, pretty quickly after the freeze occurs, uh, once the fruit thaw out. Uh, we have ice lenses that have formed beneath the epidermis on this and lifted it off. And over here on the right hand side, we've got some fruit uh, several weeks later that have survived, but they have frost rings. Uh, frost rings form when the skin does not heal down to the fruit properly and this russeting is a wound response. On pears, the injury is very similar. You can see some injured flowers that have been killed. Uh, and then uh, down here on the lower right hand side, you can see some partial injury to the flute, fruit where several seeds have been damaged. Uh, Sometimes these fruit will stay on the tree and where the seeds are damaged, you might have a flat side on the fruit. Uh, in cases where we lost just about all of the fruit, sometimes we'll have a few fruit that don't have any seeds that survive on the trees. But these are small and, and uh, malformed in a lot of cases. Here we see some frost rings on uh, the pears. And uh, as the frost occurs, these flowers are facing the sky. As the fruit get heavier, they pull down and so the frost wing rings are on the bottom portion of the fruit when you harvest it. Peaches have a very different means of freezing. They only have one seed and so when that seed gets killed, uh, it kills the fruit. Uh, you can see in the progression of uh, small fruit here, the ones on the far left are alive. They have a gel in the seed that's clear. Uh, the ones on the right have been killed and the embryo is dead and turned brown. In the lower left hand side you can see a fruit where the gel has turned brown and this has uh, killed the fruit. Over on the left hand side you can see a normal fruit that was not injured and then you can see some smaller fruit on the tree that have had their embryos killed but they're hanging on the tree and they won't develop to 
be nice sized peaches. They may or may not ripen. Uh, this is very difficult for growers to determine early in the season which of these fruit to, to thin off. They can't tell which are the injured ones to thin those off. Here you can see another shot of a limb. Uh, these are some very small injured fruit. They're starting to dry up. So these will drop off the tree and we've got a few normal ones starting to develop. Here we have a pawpaw tree that has had all of its flowers and fruit frozen. They've uh, dried up. Uh, critical temperature here is 30 degrees, just like for all of the other ones. Uh, it's important to know that any of this dried brown tissue does not need to be removed. The tree will get rid of that normally. Here we have the pawpaw tree that you saw in the previous picture after it's leafed out. Uh, there are a few flowers that survived and maybe a few fruit that set uh, at the pawpaw germplasm repository in Frankfurt. Uh, Sherry tells me that uh, they've got a small crop. Over on the right hand side we've got a, a hybrid persimmon tree. It's a cross between an American and an Asian persimmon and it's actually got some damage to the to the wood. It's killed the shoot tips uh, this tree is starting to come back out and leaf out and uh, of course it doesn't have any fruit on it. Now small trees that were frozen back and lost their leaves, say a one-year-old tree, uh, sometimes those trees were killed because the root system just didn't have enough energy to leaf, get the tree to leaf out a second time. Uh, grapes have a very different bud structure. They have uh, compound buds with a primary bud a secondary bud and a tertiary bud. The primary bud uh, comes out first, followed by the secondary and the tertiary bud. Here you can see a vine on the left where uh, some of the primary buds have been killed and some of them have survived. Uh, the primary buds have the full crop of fruit. These are the flowers that you see coming out. Uh, and uh, if the primary bud is killed, the secondary bud comes out behind it and that will have a half a crop of fruit. If the secondary bud is killed, the tertiary buds come out and those don't have any fruit. The vine just uh, survives. Again, the critical temperature here is 30 to 32 degrees at this stage of development. Uh, up in the upper left hand side, we have a home uh, grapevine that one of our growers uh, protected using an overhead sprinkler for frost protection and got his vines to come through and survive. This is kind of tricky. If the temperature drops too low, so that you're not supplying enough water and heat to keep those buds uh, from freezing, uh, then you have more damage than if you didn't uh, sprinkle irrigate. Over in the left hand bottom portion of the slide here, we have a Sunbelt variety. This is a Concord type. This is actually a much better recommendation than the Concord variety because the berries on Sunbelt ripen very uniformly in the cluster at harvest. Uh, they don't in Concord. You can see a number of these shoots have some flowers on, uh, but there's a lot of flowers missing from this vine. We generally want to see a uh, primary shoot about a hand's width apart all the way across the top of the cordon. Over on the right we have Norier, which is an interspecific hybrid between an American type grape and a European grape, and it has fewer flowers but a, a partial crop on it. Uh, for blueberries, the critical temperature is 30 to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see we've got a range of uh, floral developmental stages here in this, this uh, shoot. Uh, blueberries are such that the early maturing varieties bloom earlier. The later maturing varieties bloom later. So here we have an early maturing variety with a lot of winter damage or frost damage to it. Uh, you can see it's lost a lot of berries. They're shriveling up. They're discolored. And over here on the right, we've got a later blooming variety that has a pretty decent crop on it. Uh, critical temperature for raspberries and blackberries is 30 to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see a small bud here that has been damaged. It was killed in the bud stage. And here's a, some blackberry flowers. This one in the upper left hand side. The uh, pistol has been killed, so the ovary is dead, so that flower will shrivel up and, and dry up like the ones uh, below it. Uh, we have some clusters where one flower was killed and the surrounding flowers are alive. Uh, raspberries, uh, we have two different types of raspberries. We have the June bearing raspberries. They produce a primocane the first year, which is vegetative. This winters over and becomes a floricane. And uh, these floricanes were uh, damaged in a lot of cases due to the, the freeze. 
Over on the right hand side we have fall or ever bearing raspberries. These produce a primary a primocane in the spring and this you can see the lower portion a lot of the primocanes were damaged but these will go ahead and produce a full crop. Uh, if you winter those uh, canes over they become floor canes and you can get fruit off the, the lower portions of those uh, berry plants. But uh, the floor canes on uh, ever bearing raspberry are not as hardy as those on a June bearing raspberry. Uh, we have quite a few strawberries in the state. You can see over in the left hand side here an injured flower and a, and a un uninjured flower. Uh, plastic culture strawberries bloom three to maybe four weeks earlier than matted rose strawberries so plastic culture growers know they've got to protect their strawberries and they use a number of different techniques but mostly they use floating row covers over the berries uh, pulling one or maybe two floating row covers over when it really gets cold. Here we have a matted row planting uh, which was covered with two row covers. This is the uh, Galetta variety you can see in the lower portion here the plants were covered with uh, two row covers and the one in the upper left hand side was unprotected and you can see a lot of dead flowers in that one. Uh, now you wonder why we had so much damage on this when the temperature was 29.8 degrees Fahrenheit. But keep in mind this is the uh, National Weather Service temperature and this is at a five foot level. Uh, down on the ground these berries were probably exposed to 26 degrees Fahrenheit. We can protect uh, strawberries fairly well because they're close to the ground. The heat is coming from the ground. You can rake the straw back over the berries. This does a halfway decent job of protecting the flowers. A better technique is to throw uh, a floating row cover or a cloth material over the plants and then weight it down on the edges to keep the wind from blowing beneath it. And uh, you can protect strawberries pretty well this way. Uh, another technique is overhead sprinkling. Uh, as the water freezes, it gives off its uh, latent heat of fusion. And then the ultimate is to use a floating row cover combined with overhead sprinkling, and we can get these strawberries through just about any freeze. Here we have a strawberry in the upper right hand side that was partially injured where some of the pistols were frozen, and so, so we have a puckered up berry. Uh, on our nut trees, uh, chestnuts, hickory, pecan, and black walnut had all of their leaves frozen back. We lost the flowers, so we've lost the crop in the colder areas of the state. Uh, you want to keep in mind that uh, a lot of the mast fruit or uh, the nuts in the woods have frozen out, so the wildlife is going to be particularly hungry, and they're going to be looking for our surviving uh, fruit. Uh, many of our fruit growers have lost most of their crop, but they'll bring fruit in from other areas. So we need to be careful about telling consumers that our fruit growers don't have fruit. This discourages them from visiting our markets and compounds our growers' economic losses.